Good morning, and welcome to a worship service brought to you this morning from St. Matthew Lutheran Church in York, Pennsylvania. We welcome all of you to the service today. Joining us via Facebook Live at S-T-M-A-T-T-Y-O-R-K-P-A or through the live radio broadcast of this service on WYK 1350 AM, Sports Radio 98.9 FM, and the WYK Sports Radio website and app. And we welcome all of you today. I want to thank those who have sponsored today's radio ministry to the glory of God and in loving memory of my mother, May Catherine Snyder Claggett, on her birthday, May the 2nd. This is sponsored by Becky Claggett Link. Also, in thanks to God for the blessing of grandparents, in memory of Bob and Donna Rawhauser, two of the best. And this is sponsored by Tina Rawhauser to follow. And we thank these persons for their sponsorships today. Present to lead worship again this morning here at St. Matthew are Eric Riley, our artist in residence, Meg Falkenmer, our music director, LaQuinn Thompson, our community outreach director, working technology, Pastors Fair, Snyder, and myself, Pastor Kevin Shively, and Mike Worley in the radio room. Just a reminder that until further notice, St. Matthew's Church building is closed to the public, but the office is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and if you would need to come to the church for any reason, please remember you must wear a face mask or some similar facial covering. If you need assistance of any kind, please call or email the church office at 717-845-2721 or at office at stmatt.org. We will continue to offer worship on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. via the live radio broadcast and this Facebook Live. Also on Wednesday evenings at 8.30, we will offer Compline, also known as Night Prayer, and that is also on Facebook Live, Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. On the St. Matthew website, you can find daily devotions prepared by St. Matthew staff members and associates. Uh, you will find them on the website, also via the Facebook page of the church and special e-blast or U.S. mail. Sermons and daily Bible readings are also posted on the St. Matthew website. And if you wish to join the email list or receive other information about the church, please call the church office or visit the website. A reminder that faith formation resources and materials are being distributed to families of children and youth. And if you'd like to receive these materials, please contact the church office for more information. Bible study for adults via Facebook, the YouTube channel, and the St. Matthew website and is being presented by Pastor Fair or myself on Wednesday mornings and a Bible study will be posted each Wednesday morning by 10 a.m. If you're looking for the Bible study video on YouTube, please search for St. Matthew Lutheran Church, York, Pennsylvania. We are grateful for those who have remembered the church in your financial giving and we're most appreciative of these gifts. We realize that many people in these days are hurting financially, but for those who are willing and able, we are grateful for your gifts and the many ways that you can do that. You will find that on the website at stmatt.org slash give. Automatic withdrawal as bank payee, text to, text to give, or by U.S. mail. Again, any questions about giving, please contact our financial secretary, Lori Smith, in the church office. Also want to remind you that we are asking everyone to join together in prayer every day at 3.17 p.m. Take a moment or two or several and remember those who may be hurting, who may be in need, and also find opportunities to give thanks to God for your blessings. A letter uh, from the council president and myself was mailed out to the congregation over a week ago and also sent out as an e-blast early this past week. If for some reason you didn't get a copy of this letter and you wish to have one, please contact the church office at your convenience. We'll continue this morning with our prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and, and given, given ourselves into the power of sin. We are, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading from Acts chapter 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peter chapter 2. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> well, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. In all three years of our lectionary, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season includes a gospel reading from John chapter 10. The other two years refer to Jesus as the Good Shepherd, which comes a little later in the chapter. But this year, year A, has Jesus saying, I am the gate for the sheep. It's kind of an odd image to use for the Savior of the world, a gate. This allegory is, might be the closest thing to a parable that Jesus uses in John. And one thing that we can't tell from the, the sort of truncated reading of this passage is that it follows directly on the heels of Jesus healing a blind man in chapter 9. In fact, it's really a continuation of that story, which begins with Jesus granting sight to a man who has been blind from birth, forced to live as a beggar, and then it goes on to describe all this back and forth between the individual who's been healed and his neighbors and the Pharisees and, and even his own parents, arguing about whether or not this really is the blind man they've known for years and how it is that he is suddenly now able to see. And chapter 9 concludes with Jesus talking with this individual again, and apparently some of the Pharisees are still nearby, and they overhear when Jesus says this, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sinned, but now that you say we see, your sin remains. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, etc., etc., today's reading. So you can see it's pretty clear that the Pharisees are the targeted audience of this image of sheep and bandits and gates, as well as the object of its criticism. And contrast that with the man born blind who had quite literally followed Jesus' voice and as a result, received his sight. Jesus starts this metaphor subtly, lyrically, with Jesus himself as a shepherd figure. Though, as I said earlier, the phrase, I am the good shepherd, doesn't come in until later in the chapter. But John tells us that the Pharisees don't understand this metaphor, which is kind of hard to believe because it's a reference both to their own Jewish heritage and to their present-day context. In the Old Testament, God is often referred to as a shepherd. We have only to look at the beloved 23rd Psalm, possibly the, the best-known piece of Scripture in the entire world, to see that. But that same shepherd image is also frequently applied to Israel's kings, who were supposed to be a human extension of God's caretaking of the flock. Their job was to protect, to guide, to counsel. Their leadership was intended to bring the people prosperity and peace. But more often than not, they failed in this role, using their flock and its resources to their own selfish gain. To borrow Jesus' phrasing, they were not true shepherds. They were thieves and bandits. In Jesus' own time, the Roman emperor was also heralded as a shepherd, expected to foster lives of security and abundance for the subjects of the realm. But the reality was that three-quarters of those subjects lived in extreme poverty, disease, hunger, and violence. Again, by and large, these emperors were not shepherds, but thieves and bandits. 
So at the beginning of this metaphor, Jesus shows that he is not a thief, and you can tell that because he doesn't jump the fence. He is the one who enters through the gate. But then he shifts to this more emphatic form of speech when he says, very truly I tell you, I am the gate. Now what's a gate for? It keeps things out that might cause the sheep harm, like wolves and thieves. It keeps the sheep in, so they don't wander off and get lost or injured or starve alone in the world, in the wild. These days, a lot of us feel like sheep, locked away in a fold. Sure, we're keeping safe inside, but we miss being out in the world. We miss being connected to our family and friends, our, our church, our community. We miss the simple joy of going to stores, shopping for groceries, trying on a new pair of shoes. I miss being able to see faces. Making eye contact doesn't seem like enough when they can't see you smile at the same time. I miss taking my daughter to the playground. Maybe encountering another little boy or girl and they, they exchange names, which is how children become friends instantaneously and then they immediately start playing together. I miss close family members who don't live far away, but we've decided to avoid seeing each other in person because we move in different circles in our lives and we don't want to risk infecting one another. I miss being able to get close to the people I work with, to greet them with a handshake or a hug, or to, to be able to look at something together on the desk or on a computer screen. But I take comfort from John 10. This short passage we have today concludes with Jesus saying, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John reminds us that the most important things in this world cannot be overwhelmed, cannot be overcome by a disease or by the measures that we take to resist it. The abundant life that Jesus offers in John is not just life after death, but life in the here and now. Life that is full and rich and meaningful. Life that is found only in God. Life that cannot be contained by a face mask or a quarantine or a depressed economy. Jesus is the one true God, the shepherd whose voice we know and follow, that we may find security and nourishment as part of his flock, his community, his family, even when we cannot be in each other's physical presence. Jesus is the gate, protecting us from harm, guiding us by his voice and opening wide that we may step into the love and welcome and blessing of God.
Let us join now in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, these days many of us feel alone and unprepared and exhausted. We are steeped in news stories that make us weep and grow sad, reminding us of so many vulnerabilities, so much human loss. Help us set down our fears and burdens to find rest, to have healing dreams that connect us powerfully to you and all of your creation. Remind us that in praying we are doing your will. Prepare us for each day, knowing you are leading us, speaking to us, and touching us with your great love. Accompanying God, we pray for those who work in fire and rescue, emergency rooms and intensive care units. Sustain all who give of mind, body, and spirit to care, heal, protect, and restore. We grieve as we hear of more deaths and even suicides as the stress of being on the front line accumulates. Shelter these intelligent, deeply caring souls in your infinite compassion. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Especially we lift up in prayer this day Becky Murphy, Pat Crone, Matthew Leonard, David Rupert, Donald Markle, and the family and friends of Mildred McNair. Your beloved have, have heard your voice you have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Nurturing God, we praise you for those who plant and harvest crops. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. We praise you for your church's institutions of learning, schools, colleges, and seminaries, their faculty and administrators, as they continue to offer education, enrichment, and mentoring to students far and wide. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. Thank you for those who donate money and talents, volunteering in shelters and food banks, intending for their, for their neighbors by providing care to children of essential workers that all your flock shall not want. Lord, have compassion for our desire to do everything we can and love us when we feel we can't do enough. Eternal, everlasting God, may our masks speak of our love and become a symbol of open-heartedness. Teach our eyes to smile. 
our eyebrows to lift in welcome. Encourage us to show those awkward, distant embraces as we wrap our arms around ourselves when we see another person. Calls us to wave and yell hello from windows as we love, work, give, and shelter we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our gate, our shepherd, and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also, and also with, with you. you.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. To Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. United in the new life of Christ, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain us, keep us from harm, and fill us with courage. Amen. Amen. of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia.
Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.